So this is the Brighton Star 55mm f1.8 manual focus lens. This review applies whether you have the Nikon Z or the Canon RF. I used it exclusively as a Sony e-lens on the Sony Alpha 7S II. So the manufacturer is Brighton Star. Now that's insofar as I can tell. What I mean by that is I couldn't tell if the manufacturer's name is Brighton Star or if that's a brand from a different company. There is no manufacturer website that I could find for this lens, only online reviews and marketplaces. It first entered sale on Amazon in August of 2019, making this a pretty new lens. It's been on sale less than a year as of the recording of this video, which is July 2020. And insofar as I could tell, it's still being produced. For typical uses for this lens, it's a general all-around shooting lens with a focal length that's generally good for most subjects in some way, shape, or form. Full frame length and angle of view on this lens are 55 millimeters and 37 degrees. Now, I believe that 37 degrees is horizontal. Typically on a full frame uh, sensor or a 35 millimeter piece of film, which this lens will never be used on, a 55 millimeter lens has a diagonal of around 43 degrees. However, they have a horizontal of around 37. On APS-C, this has a focal length equivalent of 83 millimeters, 82.5 if you want to be very particular, and approximately a 24 degree, again, horizontal field of view. Diagonal on it should be around 29 degrees. The aperture range is 1.8 through 16, stepless, so you can have any aperture you want. The filter size is 49 millimeters, closest focus distance is slightly less than one half of a meter, which is slightly, slightly less than 1.7 feet. It's manual focus only, available in Sony E, Canon RF, and Nikon Z. And in this video, like I said, everything is Sony E and full frame. It weighs in at 270 grams. And if you decide to pick up this lens and want to use it, you will need to set your camera to release, which is to take a photo without a lens mounted on it for this lens to work. And that's because this lens has no electronic contacts. The camera has no idea that it's been mounted on it. The diagram indicates a design similar to a double gauss type, which is a classic lens design with reliable and good performance and some barrel distortion. This lens, however, controls that distortion very well. If you photograph grid paper for a living, you might notice the barrel distortion. If you don't do that and you just use this lens like it was intended to be used, which is to photograph basically anything else in the world, then you're never going to notice the barrel distortion. I certainly didn't. For sharpness, it's very good. A lot of online reviews that I read, I feel like they overhype the lens's sharpness. It's nothing spectacular, but it also won't let you down until f11. More importantly, I think, is the manner in which the lens handles subjects, especially from f18 to f56. I find that this lens is very flattering to any subject you can throw in front of it. What I mean by that is that color, contrast, and sharpness combine to give your subjects a pleasing and accurate rendition on the sensor. For build quality, it is excellent in general, way better than I had expected. There is a screw on the lens mount. It's a little perpendicular screw pokes out just a little bit, and I think its purpose is to keep the lens from being over-rotated on the mount. It's tried to work itself loose on me twice in, what, like six weeks, I think, that I've had it. So just keep an eye on that and make sure that that lens screw, that little screw, doesn't fall out of the lens. The focus and aperture ring damping on the lens are great, and the function on both of those rings is smooth and easily controlled when mounted on most cameras. The aperture shape is generally roundish and it has 12 blades. It's not truly round across the entire aperture spectrum in the way uh, that, it's not circular across the range, but it is way closer to round than most lenses will deliver. 
Also for videographers, the aperture is declicked. Out of focus area characteristics across the range are generally pleasing. Subjects with a busy background and a busy foreground will have a jittery out of focus area, however. In general, the out of focus is very pleasing down to f8, and then after that, it's a bit bland. Wide open with close and mid distance subjects, this lens renders depth of field like a medium format lens, and that effect is very pleasing. For design flaws such as coma, astigmatism, chromatic aberration, there were none that I saw except that diffraction is a bit strong at f11 through f16. This lens gets pretty soft in that range compared to its other apertures. The flare control is spectacular. I had to really, really try to get one image for this video that had flare in it. From a technical perspective, this lens is very good or better than, well, realistically, anything else with comparable specs on the market. In terms of balance with cameras, for large cameras, like the a7S II, it balances well and the camera's weight makes focusing and aperture use easy. For small cameras like the a5000, it's a bit front heavy and the lighter camera makes focusing and aperture use a bit harder as the camera lacks the weight needed to counter the focus dampening. These are more along the lines of annoyances rather than flaws. Wide open, the lens has some uneven illumination, but I couldn't consistently replicate that. So I'm not sure if it's something the camera's doing or if it's a lens issue, and I haven't really been able to pin down a cause as to why some of my wide open images are not evenly illuminated across the field. Stop down beyond F8, the images take on a slightly sterile look that I think makes them look a bit ho-hum but closer subjects at wide apertures look consistently good and interesting. The lens focuses a decent amount past infinity and it would be nice if the close focus was closer. So basically, it'd be nice if the infinity side of the focus range stopped at infinity and if there was a little bit of closer focus, maybe a little bit less than a foot, a little bit less than a quarter meter, give or take, as the minimum focus. A lens mounting index on the side of the lens body instead of on the flange face would also be a nice addition as that would make mounting the lens easier. That All that said, given the price of this lens, it's a great deal and a very, very good performer. Would I pay $200 for it? No way. But at 100 it's a really good general use lens and a good value for the money. All the images in this video are full frame. I didn't feel that using a full frame lens on an APS-C camera did this review any service at all. For full frame, 55 millimeters was a classic walk around lens focal length. A 55 millimeter 1.8 was considered the typical kit lens for SLRs in the 50s to the 70s. The 55 millimeter focal length was a bit easier to calculate than the 50 millimeter so there's a long body of knowledge about this focal length and how to build them well. So it should come as no surprise that this is a good lens. I shot portraits, landscapes, close-ups, and so forth with this lens. It's not a specialist lens and it does basically anything you throw at it relatively well. And as a carry around lens, it's a solid option if you are okay with manual focus. And being manual focus, it doesn't drain your camera's battery to operate a focus motor and aperture, so this is a lens that can maximize your camera's battery time. For using this lens, be sure to set your camera to fire without a lens mounted. Your camera will have no idea that this lens is on it. And then shoot in aperture priority mode for easy shooting or full manual for a harder experience. Also, practice using this lens with different focus peaking levels at different apertures prior to using it for a real purpose or shoot. I found that focus peaking was basically useless at apertures smaller than f8 and could be inaccurate at apertures f18 to f2. I bought the Brighton Star 55mm f18 on a whim to see how good a modern Chinese designed and made 55mm lens could be. It's good. 
It didn't ever disappoint. I never regretted picking it up. My complaints about it are completely inconsequential. This lens is a good option as a prime carry around lens. If you have a full frame camera and mount this lens on it and leave it there for a shoot or a hike or as your only lens while you learn how to do photography, I can think of few occasions in which you would find this lens disappointing. The out of focus area is never truly displeasing, though I find it sterile or sometimes jittery when stopped down. You can control this by avoiding situations, the jitteriness specifically, by avoiding situations with both foreground and background objects that are out of focus. I found those instances to be problematic, and I suspect that the out of focus areas overlapping caused the out of focus area in, the, in this two dimensional image, converting the 3D world into a two dimensional image, to seem jittery. The image sharpness and contrast are good and the flare control is exceptional given that the lens hood this comes with is basically a glorified 49mm to 67mm step up ring. If you feel like you need a lens hood that's fine, it's not going to hurt your images for sure and it's very good for protecting your lens, the front of your lens as well. If you really want to go overboard on your lens hood, then use the hood this comes with by a 67 millimeter filter thread telephoto lens hood and you should be able to clear that with the lens because it's got a relatively narrow angle of view and if you really wanted to go crazy then felt line that hood like i said realistically you don't need it i had to try to get this lens to flare the lens handles very well and it really embodies all of the things that make a good manual focus lens good. I do really love how smooth the lens focuses and that the front element does not rotate, which makes for an easy time using circular polarizing filters when you're focusing. In all the positive ways I could say this, this lens really embodies an element of classic photography in the size, use, image quality and subject handling it delivers. It combines that very well with modern design and construction technology as well as lens coatings and honestly, given the price, size and images this lens delivers, I can't think of a new lens on the market in this lens's class that I would rather have than this one.